Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I want to introduce you to my tank of goldfish. Okay, so a little word from the corrections department. In yesterday's video I called these a tank full of um, golden white cloud mountain minnows. And it clearly isn't. There is, to be fair, one in there. Um, but I decided to think there was five in there for some reason. I don't know what happened, sorry. Everyone makes mistakes, a stupid thing to say. I had even written down Daniel's question mark in some of my notes. Um, so, I believe it's one golden white cloud mountain minnow and four Daniel's. So I'll have a hard job breeding them, but that was my plan. But what I do want to do is get more of the golden white cloud mountain minnows, because together, schooling, if they're anything like the normal white cloud mountain minnows, um, I think they're great, so I think they'll look brilliant in a tank if I get a, a decent number of them. And I've never bred them before, so I'd like to see what happens with them. The Danios, or the females, <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with them for the moment. So I'm happily taking suggestions down in the comments below if you want to let me know. But there is one golden white cloud mountain minnow, and that's a really hard thing to say. There is one of them in there. Um, and I do like them, so I want to get some more of them. I mean, in the past I think I've heard them called things like the poor man's knee and tetra. Because they are really quite colourful and really quite bright and interesting. So they're great little fish to keep going. Um, but what I want to do today is grab these guys, which are the cardinal tetras. And they have done really well. They've passed their exams. They're through their quarantine now. So we're going to get these guys out and we're going to get them upstairs and into the discus display tank. What I'm going to do is get a little bucket, fill it with some of this tank water, just scoop them out and put them in, whip them upstairs and put them straight back in again. Um, I've got about another dozen or so upstairs in the tank upstairs, so hopefully um, they will go well together. It's always a bit of a risk adding tetras, especially uh, smaller ones. I think these ones are big enough that it won't be an issue. Um, I have just fed the discus to make sure that they're not ravenous and they're not going to go straight after these guys and try and eat them. But like I said in one of my previous videos, these are actually quite chunky, these fish. So I'm hoping they'll be okay. Um, so, let's get on with that. So what I've got is an old bucket. This is a mini bucket, a Vitalis Discus Pellets bucket. It's empty. I use this for all kinds of things, but today it's going to be for transporting fish. Um, it doesn't quite fit in there, so I'm going to get a little bit of a hose, fill this with water, and then scoop these guys out. So, bucket full of water. What I've been doing over the last few days is slowly raising the temperature of this to get it up to 30 degrees because that's what I'm running, well 29 and a half because that's what I'm running my discus tank at. Um, so these guys are fully acclimatised, ready to go in. And it's just a case of catching them now, so I don't think they'll be quite as simple as it was to catch the other fish we did the other day. But let's see if we can get a couple at least. So while we're in here, the pistols are doing fine, but as you'll see in this little hole here, remember that statement I made about I've made the hole small enough so that the bristle noses can't get in there? Well, what you see at the edge of that hole there is a bristle nose. So someone's taken over that one. That one is a bit bigger than the hole in that one, and I've noticed this is the one the pistols are using. So. Hopefully all is not as lost, but yeah, the epistles are doing great, they're out and about all the time, they're looking happy and proud. Doing a little bit of chasing, just like that. But it's much less now that they're in such a big tank with lots of hiding places. So here we are back up here, I've got my little bucket full of fish. Um, I have been a terrible fish keeper in the past and I've added uh, neons and cardinals into fish tank like this and then watch the discus swoop in and just destroy them. So the precautions I'm going to take for that are I fed the tank quite heavily today so they should be quite full and I'm also going to turn the lights off. And what that does is it just gives the fish a little bit of a chance to find a little bit of a safe haven in there. Uh, the way that I've skated this as you've seen it before I've got all the rocks piled up, there's loads of gaps for tiny little fish to just get in there and get out of the way. Nothing special about this, I'm not going to do any drip acclimation or anything like that, I'm just going to dump these in there because I know it's come from good water. Same water parameters as I've got downstairs. So all I need to do is 
wrestle with the lengths. Lift it up. And then slowly let them in. So there we go, we've got quite a healthy group now. I was right, they did go straight for the, the gaps in the rocks. I left them in there for about an hour or so and turned the lights back on and so far, giving the discus another feed, they're happy to go and do their thing. So a bit of my side, your side at the moment, but hopefully we're all good. So that's it for today thanks for watching if you've been here this far and if you're new here and you like this kind of stuff please click on that subscribe button it really helps me out and if you're not new here thanks for sticking around and i'll catch you in the next one bye